Oh, hello, hello, welcome. Welcome into iPhone Friday. Bill Sklodowski here. And I uh, want to thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Today, you know, for the last two Wednesdays in a row, we've been doing different things with photos. Uh, sorting them, organizing them, doing all kinds of photo stuff. And today I thought, well, golly, maybe if you actually do get to get out of the house and take some photos <laughs> for summer vacation, maybe, I don't know. Today, four actual helpful tips on how to take better photos with your iPhone. Let's dig in, shall we? So, uh, in case you don't know me, I am Bill Skladowski, and uh, the blog of the same name is where you can find help and tips and training on your iPhone and all of that. And we will tell you all about how you can get uh, more involved with that later on if you would like. And I uh, appreciate you hanging around. If this is helpful for you, please feel free to share it with a friend or a colleague who could also get some good information out of it. So let's dig right in, shall we? Four tips and a bonus on taking better photos with your iPhone. Now, a couple of them are actually the um, technology of how to use the iPhone to take photos. But one of them I also wanted to talk about, which is a kind of... Um, a photography thing, not so much an iPhone, but taking, you know, how to compose better pictures. I just, in digging through some of the resources I found about iPhone photography, somebody mentioned this and I thought I went, oh, that makes good sense too. And uh, it's something you can actually turn on on your phone to help you. And that is the grid on your phone. Don't know what you're talking about. Let's, let's go over to the phone and check it out, shall we? Now, um, for starters, fire up your phone if you haven't done that yet. Um, I always keep mine on the front screen where it's handy and I can get to it, but we're going to have one quick tip a little later on how to find that uh, phone if you need it quickly. But turn on the phone, fire it up, and now you'll notice on my phone, <laughs> by the way, uh, special guest today, uh, our model for our photography is our friend Wiley Coyote, one of my childhood heroes, and he's agreed to join us today. So thank you, Wiley, for being here. Um, he's the quiet sort. You'll notice, though, on the camera, there's there's the the lines. The the it's it's a grid, right? There's three three by three up and down. And you, I know it's hard to see. Maybe if I showed you on like a dark background here, um, that's the glass tabletop. But you can kind of see some of the lines there. And if I show you the computer, some of the lines. Now that's a grid, and the the way that works is um, a lot of photographers will tell you that. Um, one of the nicer ways to frame, to, you know, get your subject in the frame is with what they call the rule of thirds. And I just learned about that uh, in the past couple of days myself. So the rule of thirds applies to how you compose photographs. So according to the rule, I'm, I'm reading a little uh, note here that I took. According to the rule, each picture is divided into nine equal parts. And we saw that three by three by three, right? So uh, two vertical, two horizontal lines. The significant, and here's the important part, the significant elements in the photo should be either placed at the intersection of those lines or along one of the lines itself. So what does that do? That prevents you from just taking a square on, you know, like if I were taking a picture of, of Wiley here, square on, straight on. I mean, that's that's an okay picture, but you can see the lines. The, see the with the lines now? I could... I can like line him up to where he's like a little more on one of the cross lines or on one of the, you know, he's, so what that does, <laughs> thank you, Wiley, we appreciate that. What that does is it makes your photos more interesting. Instead of having the, just everything squared up right in the middle, especially with people, you know, Wiley, he's not a people, so, you know, but especially with people, it helps to make the photos look a little more interesting and a little more better composed. So. If your camera, if you turn your camera on on your phone and you don't see those grid lines, <laughs> all right, where do you find them? Well, if you go into settings, there's a whole separate set of settings, set of settings for the camera. And you come down, there it is, right? It's pretty far down. Scroll down all the way to camera. And there, it, I mean, it's the second thing down, the grid. And you can either have it toggled on or off, and it's no big deal. I mean, if you want to leave it on all the time, I do. So that's the grid there, and there's a few other settings in there, not anything we're covering today, but I leave the grid on. Let's go back to the home page here, and when I open up the camera, there it is every every time. 
And there's Wiley looking sharp again. So that's the first thing, using the grid to help you with the rule of thirds when it comes to taking uh, nicer pictures. Okay, so um, number two, and this is a, an iPhone thing, and that's getting to your phone quickly, right? It's like, oh my gosh, you know, the grandkid is doing something so cute, or oh my gosh, look at that beautiful critter out in the backyard, or whatever. I don't know. It's just, you know, for me, I'm always reaching and fumbling for my phone, and it's like, all right, I got to turn it on and get into it and start up the camera and all that. But there's a shortcut, and here it is. So if you need to get quickly, get to the camera quickly, from even a lock screen, all right, so if I, if I push the button on the side here, oop, push the button on the side, the phone will lock, right? It goes dark. Oh, you can't see. It. There we go. It goes dark. So now it's on the lock screen. And normally, if you had an iPhone 10 or 11, you would obviously have to, to look at it to see it, you know, to have it recognize your face. Or with me, I have the, you know, I have the thumbprint, the finger ID, right? But even when it's on the lock screen, you can still simply swipe, let me get in front of the camera, simply swipe from right to left across your phone. Er, uh, hang on, I got to get back to where I am and see if this will work for me. All right, lock screen, right to left, er, and it goes right to the camera. <laughs> it, it worked after all. So I know it's a little strange because let's get back here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Back to the Back to the big screen here. It might just be easier to show it to you this way. If the phone is locked, so in other words, it's it's dark, right? It's You're seeing the reflection of my computer there. But if the phone is dark, right, and it's obviously locked. Now, if you don't have time or if you just literally, you know, put a finger on it and it comes to the lock screen, right? Now, with mine, I have the Touch ID, so it's pretty easy. But even if you just pick up your iPhone 10 before you even let it recognize your face, if all you do left or excuse me, right to left across the screen, then the camera comes up automatically and quickly. There you go. So, you know, I'm walking along and it's like, holy cow, that's Wile E. Coyote. Swipe really fast, swipe really fast, right to left across the phone. Er, there he is. And I got the camera up and running. It's not as hard as it sounds. <laughs> I'm just making it a little tougher. So sorry about that. So anyway, that's number two, getting to the camera quickly. Okay. So most of the time, is it going to be a big difference whether I have to put my thumb on it and do the fingerprint ID and get to the... Just, I'm just saying. I'm just making, you know, giving you some ideas there. All right. So now, when you're taking pictures of that cute grandkid doing something amazing or taking pictures of that, you know, cute animal in your house or in the backyard or whatever, you know, you're always trying to wait for just the perfect moment to take the shot and you might get the kid smiling and you might get the kid doing the thing or you you understand what I'm saying we're always kind of waiting for that one specific moment and how many times do you miss it I miss it a lot so when you're in the camera here's here's our next iPhone specific trick for you and that is obviously let me get over to the camera button here obviously at the bottom of the camera here is Wiley all right, you can take the picture by tapping on the big round shutter button at the bottom. But did you know that if you press, and remember our class on long press a couple of weeks ago? If I just lean on that button, listen to what happens. You can probably hear this. I'll hold it up close to my microphone here. Listen, I'm going to take a picture while I leave. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but you can hear the camera go, you know, like the old motor drive cameras. You know how it used to make that, sound and it would take a bunch of photos well your iphone can take like 10 photos a second or something like that and you can hold it down and just take what's called a burst of photos they call it burst mode you hold the you hold the button down bam, 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 bam. so as the kid is diving off the diving board hey grandma look at me or the little kitten is jumping off of the couch or whatever whatever and you hold that button down you're going to get 10, 20, 30 photos of that thing happening. Now, of course, Wiley, he's just sitting there quietly, and so he's not hes not a very good, you know, he's not moving. So it's not really important. But once you do get those, if you go back, and we already know that at the bottom of the camera, down in the corner there, is always showing you the last picture you took, right? So if I tap on that, 
There's old Wiley, and look up in the corner, it even says, I have 17 photos in this burst. Now, if I want to, that's the last or the first, I don't remember right there, of which one it took. But look, you have a new command, a new little control down there at the bottom that says, select. So if I tap on select, now look at across the very bottom of the thumb strip there. I have all the different photos of Wiley, all 17 of them, right? So I can go, Oh, 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 there's the perfect one where he had the smile on his face. I know, Wiley, he's not really smiling. But you understand what I'm saying, you know? You, the perfect moment, just by making sure you take a whole bunch of photos all in a row, maybe two or three seconds worth, while the thing is happening, and then you can, you know, keep it or not, and choose which one you like. If you can see, right down in the lower right corner there is a little spot, a little circle, white circle. If I tap on that one, okay, that's the one it will keep for me. And it says up at the top, one photo selected. All right, and so when I say done, now it says, do you want to keep them all or you want to only keep the one that you marked? Awesome, right? So I can keep the one favorite or keep everything. And then, by the way, if I'm, if I'm really done or if I really want to, now it's still, I, I got out of that, so it's a burst in 17 photos at the top. If I hit the trash can, it's going to warn me. It's going to say, hey, you did this burst and it's got 17. You want to get rid of all 17 of them? Yes, yes, I do. And they're all 17 gone, okay? So that's another trick with capturing something that's happening quickly in front of you. Like I said, the grandkid, the pet, the whatever, you know, taking pictures of our buddy here, Wiley, you don't really need the burst mode. Okay, last but not least, and uh, this is a good one too for taking real photos with your iPhone. And that is, as we know, all right, you can always use the button down there at the bottom, the, the button, to tap on for the shutter. And now we know as well that if I hold the button down, it's going to do the burst mode. But, you know, obviously I take the picture of Wiley, one snap, one snap, and I have the picture, okay? Sometimes, and and... Uh, in some of the classes that I've taught, right, people struggle with, you know, trying to hold the camera and hold it level and, and get the good picture and get their finger around to it without having their hand in front of it or something like that. So there's a couple of other ways that you can take, snap a photo without using that button right in the front, okay? And the first one, and I think this is super easy, is the volume button. Did you know that? that the volume button on the side of your iPhone, when you're in the camera mode, only when you're in the camera mode, that volume button is the same as pressing on the button, the, the software button on the front of the camera. So again, I hold up the phone. I'm, I can't show you everything, but I hold up the phone to my buddy Wiley over there. All right, and if I'm, all I'm doing is I'm gonna put my finger right on the volume control up at the top here. Up or down volume button, Bill, it doesn't matter. And then I can press the button and it takes his picture, right? And I can come over here and get another little side shot and push the button on the side of the camera. Takes his picture again. And both times I was using the on, up, down buttons on the side of the camera there. So now I can, there's YLE number one and number two. How cool is that? All right, last one. And that is using the camera's timer. The camera has, if you go to the camera app, up at the top, right, see the, see, see the icons across the very top there? You've got the, uh, uh, I need a pointer. You, you've got the little lightning bolt, that's for the flash, on or off or automatic. Uh, you've got the uh, little target kind of a thing, which is, the, um, which is the live photos, the HDR stuff. More on that in another lesson, don't worry. But the timer is the third one over, and it looks like a little stopwatch. It looks like a little clock, okay? So if I tap on the timer, now I get the choice. It can be off or three seconds or 10 seconds. Normally it's off, which means, of course, you tap on the shutter button or you use the volume control now that you know that, and it takes the picture immediately. On the other hand, if I were to tap on three seconds, now it's a three second delay. So if I tap on the, on the camera and it goes three, two, one, takes the picture. Now, how would that be helpful for you? Oh, I don't know. What if I'm standing in the crowd and I'm four or five rows back and I want to get a shot over the top of the crowd or something, and I've done this a lot. I'll put it on the three second delay 
and I'll tap on the photo button to, to take a photo. I, I can't really show you this with the long camera here. Let's see if I can make a difference here. And then I will hold the camera up over my head. <laughs> it's hard to see. Oh, you're seeing the view of the camera though. I'll hold the camera up over my head and then I can see it count down three, two, one, takes the picture while I'm holding it up over my head or 10 second delay, either one. Okay. So I know it's a little wacky, but it works. It works really, really well. Or if you need to get a good grip on the camera, right? Um, standing on the rail of the cruise ship. I don't want to drop my thousand dollar iPhone over the, you know, over the edge of the cruise ship, right? So you could do the same thing. You could just tap on the camera, three second delay, grab it, hold it really nice and steady, and then it'll take the picture. And for those of us out there who might have a little, you know, shake in the hand sometimes too, also super helpful to make sure the camera's nice and steady when you take the picture. All right, there you go. Whew, that's a lot. Um, oh, I said I had one bonus for you, and it's the, it's super simple. It's the Apple iPhone camera website. And if you haven't been to it, um, I'm going to, I'll post the, uh, I'll post the URL to it in the comments below, and I'll post it on the handout that comes with this week's, you know, tips and tricks here. So, but Apple has a fantastic website to show you how to take really cool pictures using all the features on your iPhone. So I'd highly recommend it. And I'll give you a link to that later. So that's going to do it for today. As always, if you have questions or comments about anything you've heard, feel free to drop them in the comments below or on the blog or wherever, if you're reading them, I read and respond to everyone. If you're, uh, if you're new to this, thank you for joining. If you're watching the replay, that's fine too. Remember, here's the important thing. If you want the, um, and I'm, I apologized for this on Wednesday because I'm a teacher, right? So I always say handout. If you want the handout from today's tips for iPhone Friday, just head on over to the blog page. Let's get that up there so you can see it. Head on over to the blog page at BillSkladowski.com and sign yourself up for the newsletter, okay? It's just one a week and it's packed with all the things that you might have missed from the week. It's not like any big, you know, multiple everyday sales. I'm not, you know, I'm not selling pots and pans or anything like that. I don't know where that came from. But what happens is every weekend on Sunday, usually I will send out an email that's a recap of the past week's video. So, uh, you know, the What's New Wednesday video, what it was, what we talked about, and the iPhone Friday video, what it was, what we talked about, and links to both of them if you want to watch those videos. And importantly, whatever handouts there were for the trainings during the week, I just send you the link to that as well, and you can print it out at your computer and keep it and all that and, you know, file it away for posterity. So there you go. Again, head over to the blog at BillSkladowski.com for more information on that. As always, I want to thank you for uh, joining me. Have yourself a great weekend. Stay safe out there. And uh, we will see you again next week. Thanks. See you later.